The Trilateral Commission was founded by David Rockefeller and Zbigniew Brzezinski in July 1973 and is composed of approximately 325 elites in business, banking, and politics. The Trilateral Commission is propagated as being an economic cooperation between America, Europe, and Japan, but in reality is another secretive society and organization, this one specializing in creating the trilateral economic interdependence necessary to bring in the New World Order system of world currency and world governance. They are setting up the framework and power structure necessary for these multinational banks and corporations to assume total control, dominating the world's populations, governments, and economies. Alex Christopher wrote, The Trilateral Commission is an international organization founded by David Rockefeller, who also had a part in the founding of the Council on Foreign Relations, and who is chairman of the board. The Trilateral Commission is the Illuminati's attempt to unite Western Europe's common market, Japan, Canada, and the United States into an economic and political confederacy. What they couldn't do through the political side of the Illuminati, Council on Foreign Relations, they are now trying through the economic approach. Anthony Sutton wrote, The Trilateral Commission was founded by the persistent maneuvering of David Rockefeller and Zbigniew Brzezinski. Rockefeller, then chairman of the ultra-powerful Chase Manhattan Bank, a director of many major multinational corporations and endowment funds, has long been a central figure in the mysterious Council on Foreign Relations. Brzezinski, a brilliant prognosticator of one-world idealism, has been a professor at Columbia University and the author of several books that have served as policy guidelines for the CFR. Brzezinski served as the Trilateral Commission's executive director from its inception in 1973 until late 1976, when he was appointed by President Carter as Assistant to the President for National Security Affairs. Some notable members of the Trilateral Commission include George Bush, Dick and Lynn Cheney, Bill Clinton, Al Gore, Jimmy Carter, Walter Mondale, David Rockefeller, Zbigniew Brzezinski, Henry Kissinger, David Gergen, Richard Holbrook, Madeleine Albright, Robert McNamara, Paul Volcker, Alan Greenspan, and Paul Wolfowitz. U.S. Senators Dianne Feinstein, Robert Taft Jr., Charles Robb, William Cohen, and John Glenn. Congressmen, ambassadors, secretaries of treasury, state, and many other political figures are trilateralists. There are also many banking institutions represented at trilateral meetings, including the European Central Bank, World Bank, IMF, the Federal Reserve, Chase Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, Bank One, Bank of Tokyo, Bank of Japan, and more. Also, plenty of multinational corporate interests are represented, including Fuji Xerox, Goldman Sachs, AIG, ExxonMobil, Shell, Chevron, Texaco, Sony, Samsung, Comcast, Time Warner, Carlyle Group, Levi Strauss, Daikin, Sara Lee, GE, GM, Ford, Chrysler, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Johnson & Johnson, IBM, Boeing, and Citigroup. Lori Strand wrote, Many of the original members of the Trilateral Commission are now in positions of power where they are able to implement policy recommendations of the Commission. Recommendations that they themselves prepared on behalf of the Commission. It is for this reason that the Commission has acquired a reputation for being the shadow government of the West. The Trilateral Commission's tentacles have reached so far in the political and economic sphere that it has been described by some as a cabal of powerful men out to control the world by creating a supranational community dominated by the multinational corporations. Senator Barry Goldwater wrote, David Rockefeller's newest international cabal, the Trilateral Commission, is intended to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of the commercial and banking interests by seizing control of the political government of the United States. The Trilateral Commission represents a skillful, coordinated effort to seize control and consolidate the four centers of power – political, monetary, intellectual, and ecclesiastical. All this is to be done in the interest of creating a more peaceful, more productive world community. What the Trilateralists truly intend is the creation of a worldwide economic power superior to the political governments of the nation-states involved. 
They believe the abundant materialism they propose to create will overwhelm existing differences. As managers and creators of the system, they will rule the future. During the birth of the Trilateral Commission was the U.S. Carter administration, which was full of members. President Jimmy Carter and Vice President Walter Mondale were trilateralists. Carter's Secretaries of State, Defense, and Treasury, Vance Brown and Blumenthal, were all members. Carter's National Security Advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski co-founded the commission. And on top of that, Carter placed 26 other members into senior administrative positions. Brzezinski wrote of the commission in his book Power and Principle, saying, Contrary to the myth, the Trilateral Commission is not a conspiracy designed to dominate the world, but genuinely strives to engage Americans, Western Europeans, and Japanese in a common endeavor to shape a more cooperative world. In the same book, he wrote, All the key foreign policymakers of the Carter administration had previously served in the Trilateral Commission. The next president, Ronald Reagan, was not a trilateral member, but his vice president, George Bush, was, and so were many men in his administration. After Reagan was eight years of Bush the trilateralist, then eight years of Clinton the trilateralist, both of whom appointed dozens of other members to high-level positions. Bush Jr. is not a member, but his father is, his vice president Cheney is, and he has appointed members to his cabinet. At a Trilateral Commission meeting in 1991, David Rockefeller actually said, We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. But the work is now much more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. Dr. Johann Koppel said, The interests behind the Bush administration, such as the CFR, the Trilateral Commission, and the Bilderberg Group, have prepared for and are now moving to implement open-world dictatorship within the next five years. In 1983, I warned of a takeover of world governments being orchestrated by these people. There was an obvious plan to subvert true democracies, and selected leaders were not being chosen based upon character, but upon their loyalty to an economic system run by elites and dedicated to preserving their power. All we have now are pseudo-democracies.